Grace and peace to you from Grace and Peace Together in here in Lexington, Virginia. I uh, hope you're having a great Sunday. I encountered a hummingbird in the front organic garden this morning. And it's pretty cool when you see them sit because um, they're usually humming around. Uh, and then in the backyard, it came up to me and saw me face to face. And I also uh, sat down on one of the primroses in the back, evening primroses in the back flower garden. Um, you know, a hummingbird has a unique sound when it's flying. And you know it's a hummingbird. It's really cool how its wings create this sound with the wind. I mean, it's just, they're super fast, and it's really neat to see them actually sit still for a while. Um, had a niece who had a hummingbird actually sit on her fingertip once. And I think uh, someone else in the family did too. So th those are unique times. But the reason I'm sharing this is because the sound is unique. You can't miss it. You can't deny it. A hummingbird sound is a hummingbird sound. Just kind of like the, you know, the cicadas have a unique sound in the summer. One of a kind. And I'm here to share with you that the God of the universe who created the universe and everything in it, including you and I, and he made us wonderfully and fearfully were made it made us unique with our own sets of uh, fingerprints that no one else has this same God has a unique sound um, a lot of people say they hear from God but be careful and also test the spirits and look at the ancient word to see if um, what people say is measuring up with the ancient tested tried and true word and I have been convicted recently because I, don't, I do not always listen even though the Lord speaks and I have this issue called A strong flesh and a sinful desire and we all do we all have it and we fight it we have habits ingrained in us and uh, despite being born again in Jesus Christ we still struggle and it's a reminder for me and uh, I figured I'd pass it on to you all that when you hear your father Lord God Almighty the one who created you then it's it's wise to listen and I'm thankful that he still loves me despite my turning a deaf ear so to speak at times and um, I'm glad that he receives me and allows me to come back to my senses and then he restores me you know King David said when he fell flat on his face, he said, Restore unto me the joy of your salvation. Do not, he said, do not uh, throw away your Holy Spirit from me. And that's my prayer for myself and for you all today, is that we would have more of the Holy Spirit, and we would hear his voice more clear today. And just like a human bird has a unique sound that I heard again today several times in the front yard and backyard. Um, so too there are sounds that um, are unique and and critters that are unique. There was a wolf spider that had blended in with a wilted pumpkin leaf outside and I was trying to get a squash bug 
and all of a sudden this wolf spider climbs on my hand from the wilted plant and it got freaking me out for a minute you know like spiders but you know when you see them crawling on you it's a different story sometimes but it blended in and sometimes um voices blend in and sounds blend in and something that's camouflage could come up and get you and there are a lot of voices clamoring for your attention and my attention in this world and they aren't always from the creator there's a lot of voices there is an enemy a real enemy of this world and um and oftentimes we're our greatest enemy uh but there is evil and so you got to be careful what voices you listen to and so Jesus addresses this um, in John 10 10 but uh, I'm going to start out in Isaiah and Isaiah 30 um, and we're going to look at verse 21 I do believe and it goes like this Whenever you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear this command behind you. This is the way. Walk in it. So the Lord is sharing that it will be evident which direction you need to go when you when you need to hear which way to go. And sometimes you got to wait to hear and listen to it, uh, but it's it'll be clear. The Holy Spirit will speak and let you know which way to walk. Let me read that again. Whenever you turn to the right, to the left, your ears will hear this command behind you. This is the way you walk in it. Uh, I've walked in some ways I shouldn't walk in, and I, I know that. And I've asked God to forgive me, and I am learning to repent and turn around and, and walk in the right way and I hope that maybe this finds one of you that needs to hear this that you're walking in the wrong direction there's a there's a narrow path that we as believers need to follow in, in every situation the wide path that leads to destruction but the narrow one leads to life remember this it's God's word you can look it up I'm just paraphrasing right now. In John 10.10, 10, um, Jesus puts it like this. Um, he likens himself to a shepherd and likens us unto sheep. And verse 4, the latter part of verse 4, Jesus said, The sheep follow the shepherd because they recognize his voice they will never follow a stranger instead they will run away from him because they don't recognize the voice of strangers jesus gave them this illustration but they did not understand what he was telling them so jesus said again i assure you i am the door of the sheep all who came before me are thieves and robbers but the sheep didn't listen to them I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will come in and out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come so that they may have life and have it in abundance. Abundance, that's a Zoe life. It's a, a life that overflows. It's like you're, You've got this huge pitcher and you keep pouring into it and it keeps overflowing and it spills everywhere because it's good. It's good and full. Um, so Jesus is saying that there are other voices. There's strangers. Uh, my question to you is are you allowing your sense of your hearing to be refined so you don't follow after those strangers? Those the that are thieves to come kill and steal and destroy your life that's a you know it's a good question word to the wise um, and it, you 
mm-hmm. deserve to ask yourself that question. Uh, you owe it to yourself. Now, I've always thought this was interesting in, in the First Kings in uh, chapter 19, 11 through 13. Elijah had had uh, a real victory against uh, Jezebel and all her prophets of, of Baal. And uh, then he just had a really depressive moment. And the Lord was trying to restore him and he needed to talk to him. And he was waiting on to hear the voice of the Lord. And um, he had this experience here in First Kings 19. And verse 11. And then he said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the Lord's presence. At that moment, the Lord passed by. A great and mighty wind was tearing at the mountains and was shattering cliffs before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, there was a voice, a soft whisper. The other versions, translations say a still small mm-hmm. voice. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And suddenly a voice came to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? See, the Lord came in a soft whisper, a still small voice. And he still does today. Are you hearing it? Are you listening? What is he saying to you today? I can tell you one thing that he says to you is that I love you. I mm-hmm. created you. Things went awry and I brought you back through the sacrifice of my son Jesus. And I'm here to help you walk through this life by the power of the resurrection. And I will point the way through my Holy Spirit and I will tell you which way to walk in it. I know he says that. That's something he says quite often. Now, I talked about how I didn't listen um, recently and um, I have that tendency. And we can, like Ephesians 4.30 says, we can grieve the Holy Spirit. Uh, Hebrews 4 7 is an admonition to us who are in Christ to be careful about ignoring the word that the Lord is speaking to us. Hebrews 4 verse 7 it's actually uh, also it can be found it's a it's a quotation uh, that is looking back I'm trying to look at this small handwriting here. Um, yeah, I'm just looking back in the Psalms. It's quoting King David in Psalm 95. Um, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. You know, we can easily dismiss the voice of God so easily. And uh, we can get hardened, and it's easier to dismiss it. But when we listen and obey, there's you know there's a blessing, and it's it's for our own good. You know, it's just kind of like I had an issue with my van this summer, and with the where you put the antifreeze uh, and the coolant. Uh, and the had a water pump and also radiator issue and when I didn't put when when things were leaking out and I didn't put the right stuff in then my engine was beginning to have problems and the same thing with us when things aren't working properly um, we're not going to operate efficiently and 
we can eventually really tear up the engine of our of our souls so to speak and uh, get left stranded because we're listening to the wrong voices and the wrong sounds in this life um, but I, I want you to hear loud and clear that the Lord loves you and the, I hope you hear that sound that he loves you so much that while we were yet sinners Christ died for you and me and, that, and that's a beautiful sound that's echoed for 2,000 years the truth that for eternity past to eternity future he had a, a plan to bring you to himself so you could experience life and life to the fullest and and I'm still learning this myself and I hope you can join me in learning this great opportunity that our creator has given us um, another admonition is um be careful with the unique sounds and voices you hear out there because they could be persuading you in the wrong direction. Matthew twenty seven twenty said the religious leaders of the day persuaded the crowds to release Barabbas over Jesus, even though Jesus was innocent. You know, Barabbas had actually murdered people and stuff. Uh, but it's amazing how the voice can be used to persuade and be careful um, because we are constantly being manipulated through various sources so be sure you're listening to the right voices and lastly um, you know this is a really cool picture of the voice of Jesus taking care of a real source that was inputting the wrong voices into this father's son's life and was causing destruction and uh, I'm going to finish with this because I, 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 I always love to finish with the story that Jesus was in and um, let's go to Mark five, uh, Mark 9 actually I got to backtrack here I was kind of further into the I thought I waited in Hebrews, so I'll go backtrack. Mark 9, and uh, 20 through 26. And it goes like this. Sorry about that. I've got these gnats that I must have brought in from the garden, and they're harassing me as I speak here. Uh, Mark 9, 20. They brought this... Uh, boy to Jesus when the spirit saw him mean, meaning the spirit that was in the boy immediately convulsed con <laughs> immediately convulsed the boy he fell to the ground rolled around foaming at the mouth how long has this been happening to him Jesus asked his father from childhood he said and many times it's thrown him into the fire or water to destroy him but if you can do anything have compassion on us and help us now get this there were voices in this boy that were doing things to him to bring him harm. Man, that's such a, a incredible on-point picture of what's happening in this world today. Then Jesus said to the Father, If you can, everything's possible to the one who believes. Immediately, father of the boy cried out, I do believe. Help my unbelief. This boy really, this this father's boy really wanted help. When Jesus saw that the crowd was rapidly coming together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to him, You mute and deaf spirit, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. And that's the voice of God. That's the voice of our good Father. That's the voice of Jesus. That's the Holy Spirit. Then it came out shrieking and convulsing him violently. The boy became like a corpse so that many said he's dead. But Jesus, taking him by the hand, raised him and he stood up. My friend, 
the voices, the sounds of this world don't want to leave easily. But Jesus' voice will drive them out and for good. And he won't just leave you hanging. He will personally pick you up and build you back up. Um, I hope you want that. I need it desperately all the time. Um, I have to be reminded of it often because it's so easy to drown in the voices of despair and the voices of uh, destruction. You know, I pray that you can hold your head up high and be confident in the fact that you are loved, you have a purpose, and you mean something to the one who created you and you mean a lot to me so that's why I'm sharing this with you love to talk chat about this um, you know where to find me Lex Vegas and uh, you can hit me up on personal message if uh, you want to if you're not around Lexington Virginia grace and peace to you for grace and peace to you gathering